In order to draw attention, you have to be different. Many people try to do it with words, but even the dirtiest trash talk is not worth the performances that can be done in the ring. Some of them don't do it on purpose, others do, so they make up a real mess and get in the chronicles and the memory of the fans for a long time. These are the moments we'll talk about today. Friends, today's video will be dedicated to the 10 most bizarre and crazy things that happened in the ring. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words, and subscribe to the channel so you will never miss any upcoming videos. Here we go! 10. Jaron Ennis looks up to the sky. There is a special kind of guy in boxing who in simple terms can be called a stuntman. They are the ones who show wonders of agility and reflexes which are then permanently documented in the highlights. The most famous stuntman or trickster in the history of the sport is Roy Jones Jr. who was so fast and elusive that opponents were afraid to throw punches so they wouldn't look like a laughing stock. Joke. Our generation also has its stuntmen and that includes Jaron Ennis. The young undefeated boxer with an elite base in the amateurs right now is getting closer and closer to the throats of the welterweight champions. But we are interested in this fight five years ago against another then undefeated athlete, Armando Alvarez. Looking only at the boxer's record, one might have assumed that we were in for an even fight. But in reality, there was only a harsh beating. Ennis was in another dimension of speed and was smashing his opponent's defense in complete relaxation, feeling no resistance. While Alvarez was pushing and trying to give something away, Jaron was having fun and making Armando punch whole combinations through the air. But those kinds of stunts don't get you into this top list. The most interesting moment happened in the second period. The combination to the head and it's starting to open up. How about that nifty move? Once again, making Alvarez look like a complete idiot, Jaron stood up for two and a half seconds, demonstratively turning his back on his opponent. At this point, you could paint a picture of him and Armando didn't even try to take any advantage of it and stood there thinking, uh, what's going on here? 9. Dean the Great Floor Flip Along with all the professional boxers, there is one imposter in this top list, but please, let's give him a chance to prove himself. We're talking about the famous American YouTube and TikTok blogger, Dean the Great. This guy is pretty young and has made his breakthrough not so long ago, mainly due to his high quality videos on boxing. One day, tired of only filming, he decided to jump into the ring with someone and challenge himself. Naturally, no one wanted to see a YouTuber fight against a professional, why should they? Instead, the media kid was tossed a rival from the blogger crowd, a guy named Evil Hero. So that the young talents would not be swollen to death, they were given only three rounds of two minutes each. Take a punch, make your opponent react to it, and then throw the... Oh, oh, and he's, oh that was a bad one. I can't help but notice that the shooting boxing videos, as well as the parallel training, made a pretty good beginner out of the guy. He had good movement, and with the first jab, he knocked down the wimp in front of him. In general, there were three falls in the first round by the wimpy bad boy, who had only laid one straight punch. Just after the third knockdown, the referee realized that it was pointless to continue this fuss in the sandbox and stopped the fight. He looks like a pro boxer. He really does, for sure. He's, he's a little too good. Yeah. There it is. I think we need to wait. We've got done by those three, three knockdown rules. And that's how good that is. Well, Dean was just happy. Running from one corner of the ring to the other, at one point he stopped in the center and decided that doing a somersault was the best idea. Kim, you must be delighted with that. Delighted with that. Delighted with that. Bam! The kid hit the canvas with his nose. What a hard fall. Flips are very rare in boxing and the big one didn't manage to make them fashionable. Well, the kid's got it all ahead of him. 8. Bernard Hopkins Push-Ups Bernard Hopkins is often overlooked when compiling the list of the greatest boxers of all time, but 99.9% .9 of other boxers could envy the hangman's list of accomplishments. The best years of the legend were in the late 90s and early 2000s, when he was beating monsters like De La Hoya and Trinidad, but the next 15 years, Bernard still had a lot to offer the youngsters. 
In 2010, for the first time, Hopkins faced the famous Canadian heavyweight of his time, John Pascal, who had four different belts. Despite him being 45 years old, Bernard looked unbelievable, but the fight had to be ended in a draw, after which the rematch was rescheduled between the opponents. In the beginning of the fight, Pascal was leading, throwing a lot of power punches to Hopkins, almost dropping him. The old man responded with his trademark style and already in the middle of the fight, he managed to put his opponent's cardio on the line. From that moment on, the hangman domination began. But the most interesting thing he dropped was just after the sixth round. And maybe the kidney punches didn't do damage, but Emmanuel, they're still illegal, aren't they? Now Hopkins is doing push-ups in the ring. Right before he came out, Bernard went down to the canvas and did five perfectly clean push-ups, showing with all his might how much cooler his form was. If that wasn't the best humiliation in boxing history, what was? Pascal took it all but couldn't punish Hopkins, and in the 10th segment, he was almost out by knockdown. Pascal lands the right hand, and again his glove touches the canvas, and again it's going to be ruled. Bernard Hopkins won by decision, and with that he rescored Foreman's record, becoming the oldest champion in the history of boxing. 7. Why do you need a capper? At a matches. Unfulfilled talent is the saddest thing that can happen in the boxing industry. In the early 10s, professional boxing lacked guys from Foggy Albion. The historical homeland of boxing couldn't get any stars on the world stage and Ricky Hatton had to take the credit for them all. But now a new star by the name of Adam Etches seems to be starting to take the spotlight. The Sheffield native was known for his career in the amateurs, and upon entering the professional arena, he immediately signed with Ricky Hatton's promotion company. The fight in question was one of the first fights of the guy's career, and there he did the most bizarre but at the same time amusing thing. Right in the middle of the fight, Adam missed the hook and then threw a triple counter punch, causing his opponent's kappa to fly out. More than a common situation, but Etches was not a typical guy and instead of waiting, played the kappa like a soccer ball, knocking it out of the ring. In my opinion, this is the only time in the history of boxing when the poor kappa got more than its owner. Adam himself commented on his act like this. Uh, I lost my temper a bit, he kept spitting his gum shield out. I don't know whether it was done on purpose or whether he, whether he was doing it for a rest, but I, I got a bit angry and per perhaps I shouldn't have kicked it, but again, fans liked it, so... Yeah, you fancy yourself a bit? 6. Loyal Zapata Hilario Fans Let's dive into the world of the lightest weights in boxing and take a close look at the careers of Fidel Bassa and Zapata Hilario. The first was known as the Colombian Fireball for his devastating style and wild pace throughout the fight, at whose bouts only the mentally challenged could get bored. In his best years, Fidel was a kind of Riddick bow in terms of the bizarre stories that regularly happened to him in the ring. Hilario, on the other hand, was a much more humble Panamanian guy, not lacking in championship potential. He twice took major organization titles in the lightest weights, but quickly parted with them afterwards. The fight of two of the brightest representatives of their category took place in 1987 in Barca's homeland, which will play an important role. The fight was on a countercourse with the obvious aggressor in the form of the reactive Barca. He imposed an open fight and the audience supported their idol in everything. Many people came very close to the ring, so close that they could even reach him, and in the eighth segment it played its role. Fidel clamped his opponent against the ropes and brought him down with all his might, while the beloved fans at the same time grabbed Hilario's leg and dragged him the hell down. Just imagine such a thing at a modern tournament. It would have been a sensation. But at the same time, problems were solved differently and the brave Panamanian's team rushed with fists to defend the honor of their man and only five minutes later, the meeting continued without dwelling on the past, so to speak. 5. Andre Durrell, Punishment for a Punch After the Gong 
This time we go to the second middleweight division, and more specifically the belt fight between Andre Durrell and Jose Uzcategui in search of crazy situations. The top two representatives of their respective weight classes were at very different stages of their careers. Andre was a solid veteran, already a bronze medalist in the Olympics, but never had much success in the professionals. The fiery Venezuelan knockouter, on the contrary, was in his prime, had only one defeat under his belt, and was preparing to tear people's heads off for the championship belt. At least that was what most of the analysts who made a forecast for this match believed. At first, the impatient left-handed Jose launched his best punches at Durrell. The veteran took a lot of punches to the jaw, but some particularly dangerous punches went into the block, making his life easier. This pattern of predator and prey set in during the first round and lasted until about the fifth round, when Andre got the hang of it and started to counter his opponent with a hard straight punch. Jose took a few punches, but it only made him more furious and in the 8th round, at the very end, he gave his opponent a very scary hook. Durrell was floating. The bell rang, but Uzkatagui, totally out of his mind, finished the defenseless American. The veteran collapsed and Jose pretended he wasn't involved and there would have been nothing wrong with this fight if not for the reaction of cornerback Durrell. Oh wow, my, oh, Jesus. Oh, my goodness gracious, my gosh, that's inappropriate. Who came up to the Venezuelan after the whole thing and on the sly prescribed him a great left in revenge for his boxer. That's what instant karma is all about. 4. Tyson knocks out the ref. There has always been some indefinable spice to Tyson and his performances that no one else has. But if the early Mike did have that spice, then after his loss to Holyfield in the dialogy, all his fights turned into some kind of jalapeno plantation. Wild interviews, threats to journalists and excessive aggression are only the tip of the iceberg, but at the very bottom is the fight against Lou Savarese. This fight went down in history as the craziest fight of all time for a number of reasons, but we're only interested in what happened during the fight. Poor Lou, if only he had known in beforehand how angry Tyson was that night. Now, to whom did they order the hearse? Oh Lou, it's for you. That Tyson threw was like a kick from a How else can you describe a fight where Savarez went down with an uppercut in the 10th second? It was obvious that Mike wouldn't leave the ring until he buried his opponent in it. As the countdown resumed, the former champion went full speed again and hit Lou with such bombs that the entire arena shook. The referee saw no reason for the broken Savarez to continue and tried to interfere, for which he immediately took a beating from Mike himself. What the hell are you doing, Iron? With such a size difference, heavyweights could have just killed the poor man, but he showed his true guts, got up and made Tyson stop after all. I bet that without that selfless referee, Lou would have been rolled into the ring. 3. Curtis Harper went outside the ring Sometimes it can be unrealistically difficult for boxers to get a good deal for themselves. Without star status or at least a powerful record, it's not easy to get more or less decent paychecks. Many guys are forced to fight for many years for a miserable couple of thousand dollars and can't do anything about it. But this hero decided to take matters into his own hands. In August 2018, two unremarkable heavyweights found themselves in a ring, one of whom, Curtis Harper, acted as a gatekeeper for a young African, Efe Ajagba, who sported a 5-0 record. The situation was more than typical, but Curtis found an unconventional way out of it. The tall F.A. threw a couple of menacing glances in Curtis's direction, but the man stood there with an unfazed, completely relaxed face. You'd think he was about to give something super spectacular in the fight, but instead Harper took to the ropes with a gong. 
This guy wasn't going to fight tonight at all. The spectators, the organizers, anybody on this planet could have expected any outcome but this. The guy just walked off the court, something no one else had ever done. Curtis later admitted that it was all about too small a fee for which he didn't want to go out at all, but an eloquent manager talked him into it. 2. The Fight After the Gong, Riddick Bowe Of all the boxers who have ever stepped into the ring, Riddick Bowe can be proud of having the highest rate of weird fights. But the problem isn't always Bowe himself. Sometimes it seems that he's just surrounded by an aura of insanity, which translates into a bunch of ridiculous incidents. As an example, in his rematch against Holyfield, who was already beaten by Big Daddy, a freaking parachutist came flying into the ring out of nowhere. The guy got tangled up in the ropes and the champions team whipped him for such an awkward interference. We can also remember a very strange fight with a Polish fighter, Andrei Goloda, who did an absolute record number of punches to the balls of his opponent for which he was disqualified. Well, those fights were not Riddick's fault, but his second fight with Elijah Tillery was. The bell, and now some extra work. Oh, a little kickboxing by Elijah Tillery. Bo won't stand for that. Rock Newman, the manager of Riddick Bow and a tag team comes. Pounding away with sluggish jabs, Riddick moved to uppercuts fairly quickly and then easily pinned his opponent against the ropes and collapsed on the floor. Was that a knockdown? Hook. That was a left hook. It was obvious that Elijah was having a hard time dealing with this Terminator, but he still managed to get up and live up to the bell. Going to his corner, the champion threw a jab towards Tillery, who responded with a low kick. What the hell is going on here? Bo didn't appreciate the joke and immediately jumped on the cocky opponent, again pinning him against the ropes, and at the same time, Daddy's manager, the scandalous Rock Newman, grabbed Elijah by the neck and threw him the hell out of the ring. Yeah. The manager client tandem really went at it after the first round, and then they punished Tillery by knocking him out in the fourth round. 1. Mike Tyson bit an ear off Today we have seen boxers in whose performances you can often see some damn things, but all records for the degree of heat of passion breaks, of course, Mike freaking Tyson. Back from prison, this beast became even angrier, tougher and completely lost its instinct for self-preservation. Now he went out not just to knock out his opponent, but to take his soul to hell. In the shortest time after the term was over, Iron had four fights all won by knockout and went out to the grey horse of the heavyweight division, Evander Holyfield, who decided to leave all his titles in the category below and fight for greatness up here now. Having undergone strongman training in Anthony Joshua's beloved techniques, the Jock Holyfield gave a terrific performance and stopped the star near the end of the encounter. The victory of the underdog for odds plus 1500 was a sensation and the rematch between the muscular guys was only a matter of time. If the first fight was a textbook on how to beat the current Mike, then the second was a complete sucker punch with a huge amount of offense from Evander. The legend hit the back of the head flew into Tyson with his head, opening up a cut, and the clinch was the knight's favorite real deals position in the universe. By the third round, the former champ was so tired of standing in the arms of a sweaty man that he decided to, you know what he decided to do. In the first fight. What happened here? He got bit, I think. Evander Holyfield, look out, he's pushed right here. Tyson chopped off a piece of Holyfield's ear with his teeth and then did it again. Naturally, Mike was disqualified for such stunts, but his masterpiece moment stayed with us forever. And that's it. Did you like the video? Then be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. What are the crazier or weirder moments in the ring that you remember? Be sure to share your opinion in the comments. If this video gets 3000 likes, we will surely release the second part where you will see even more concentration of strange actions of boxers.